Hey you! What up? Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. Mariam here. Today's video is going to be a little bit different, but I'm very excited for this one and I hope you are too. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the makeup that I'm currently loving, old and new favorites, and how I wear them in my daily life. So this is going to be kind of like a talky, chatty type of tutorial. Also review, I'm going to be talking about current new products that are sticking around because as you know, I film and review makeup for a living and not all of it actually stays. A lot of it goes out the door, but some of the products, AKA my favorites, do stick around. So this is the focus of today's video. If you like this sort of thing, then remember to subscribe if you aren't already, notification bell, thumbs up for this video. And now let's hit it. Old and new makeup that I've been loving lately. Let's go. All right, so first of all, you could probably guess my current favorite primer that I'm using every day. Yes, it is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder. And yes, I have a fresh one. However, this one does not live in this room. This is my filming room where I solely create content. I don't actually get ready for the day in this room, which is why <laughs> this is the one that lives in this room. And this is the one that actually lives in my real life get ready room just next door. So this is what I'm gonna show you. The reason why I love this one, just in case you don't know and might need a refresher, is because I am an oily skin type and this blurring balm powder in the universal shade, I like to use as a primer because this controls oils, smooths imperfections better than any other primer that I've tried lately or of all time for that matter. This is absolutely my favorite one. I cannot live without it. Not only does it control my oils, but it also smooths any sort of acne marks, any texture marks, acne scars, whatever. And you can clearly see that the texture of my skin now looks so much smoother because I've gotten rid of that shine. A little bit on the forehead as well. I like to get rid of any shine from the top of my brows. That always seems to peek through and that is that. So now for my everyday makeup, if I'm going to the gym or if I'm doing errands, if I'm not going to an event, this is the combo that I've been wearing lately. The Cali Ray Free Dreaming Skin Wellness Diffusing Tint. Usually I wear shade eight, but I ran out of shade eight. So now I'm wearing shade six and I'm mixing that with the Jones Road Gel Bronzer in the shade medium. Initially, I didn't like this product, but I like it when mixed in with the Cali Ray. I'm not gonna do that today because today I kind of want to show you what I've been wearing for something a little bit more glamorous or upscale, perhaps for beauty events. So for that, <laughs> Surprisingly, I've actually been reaching for the Makeup by Mario, grab the wrong shade, foundation. I'm currently shade 14O, but I grabbed 12O, of course. But that's okay, I'll just show you the 12O. And this is just a sample size. I actually do have a full size. But this is a foundation that I didn't initially like, and I don't think I'll be liking it going forward into the colder weather months. I'm just applying it here on this palette. The reason why I like it now is because it is light enough and doesn't provide as much coverage as I would need in the colder weather months when I break out a lot more. So because this is like a medium coverage, plus it has a little bit of luminosity that tends to enhance bumps, texture, pores, things like that. I tend to stay away from those. So I'm using this Graftobian palette, which I've been using lately. And for today's video, I'm gonna be using the Dress Your Face brush set. I recently got my hands on it after I attended Tamana's makeup masterclass with my sister. I do have a shorts video on that if you haven't checked it out. But this is something that Tamana invited me and my sister to, and it was such an incredible experience. I really, really loved it. She also gifted us her entire brush set and just so many goodies. And so this is what I've been using lately. I've been using her brushes because they're really great. I really love the set. And and because she sort of went over every single brush and how to use it, I just feel like I want to ingrain it in my mind. I want to remember how to use her specific technique with her specific brushes. So this is what I've been using. All right, so now I'm reaching for the Flawless Foundation Brush from her set. I added a little bit of this foundation to the palette. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip the brush just like the tip of the bristles into the foundation. And I'm gonna start covering every square inch of my skin. So because my skin is now on the good side, I can get away with wearing this foundation, but I wouldn't say that this one is very forgiving on the skin. Your skin needs to be on the good side, pretty healthy and pretty flawless. And so because right now I'm not breaking out, you could see that it's actually enhancing my skin. Real quick, I'm just gonna clip up these bangs because I can see these getting very annoying. Perfect. So now back to the foundation, just kind of stippling it on. The way that I saw Tamana do this, in her masterclass. And by the way, her model was none other than the gorgeous Carly Bible. Love them both so much. 
And I just love attending makeup master classes. I feel like you can learn from every single makeup artist. I've attended quite a number of these in my career. During COVID, I remember it was very popular for makeup artists to host Zoom master classes. So I've definitely attended at least three, if not four, during that period. I believe it was Makeup by Mario, it was also Patrick Ta, Ash for sure. And I just love learning from them and applying their tips and tricks. And what I loved about Tamana's class is not only that she was using her brushes and teaching us exactly how she uses them and how she implements them, but also she was showing us her signature look, which is a bridal with an Arabic twist type of glam like super glam, full on glam. It was so interesting for me, and even for my sister who's 16 now, it was so interesting for us to just sit there and learn. And now implement, you know? You're never too old or too young to learn, right? And you can learn from anyone. And I'm not just talking makeup, I'm talking every aspect. All right, so now that the makeup, the foundation is evenly spread across my face, I really like this technique with this specific brush to use stippling motions and just kind of bouncing the brush on your face. I really feel like it gives great coverage. It maximizes whatever foundation you're using and it kind of just sets the makeup in there, you know? It's a very, very solid type of technique. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not break mirrors here. So this is kind of what I've been doing lately. For the concealer, you already know I've been reaching a lot for the Makeup by Mario concealer, especially with the foundation. I went back to the foundation after discovering the concealer. I really, really like this formula. Not everybody does, and that's okay, but I am a fan. I'm just gonna use shade 240, the tiniest amount of that, because this concealer does go a long way. I'm just using a little bit of that, like around the nose, a little bit on the chin, bridge of the nose. Literally, this is what I do when I get ready for events. This is what I've been reaching for lately, and I've been liking it a lot. So then for my concealer, I'm gonna use the face and eye paint brush. I also love the fact that Tamana is just like me. She's a brush girl, she's not a sponge girl. So that was very natural for me to pick up. I also loved her teaching style. Like, she's been doing it for 10 years, you guys. She's been having master classes since we both started in social media, if not before. And she's really got it down packed. Like her teaching style, just her method, it's so chill. There was such a nice female empowerment moment with all these amazing speakers. We even had a meditation session. Like it was just an amazing environment for learning and for beautifying, not just your outer beauty, but also like your inner beauty. I loved it. And I would totally recommend her masterclass, her Dress Your Face masterclass to any of you guys. Her last one before New York, I believe was in India. And before that she was scheduled to be in New York and then COVID happened. So this is sort of like her welcome back event. And I know she's gonna be having more. And me and my sister are like literally ready <laughs> to sign up. It was that good. So yeah, so this concealer for me and for my oily skin is ideal because it sets itself it makes my skin look more matte than what it is. It's long lasting. I really, really like it. I like that it feels a little bit more solid on the skin, which I don't know, it just gives me that assurance that it won't move, you know? I personally always like to brighten this area in between the brows. And I'm just using the concealer and also going back to the same brush just to tap that in seal that in and blend with my foundation. And now all of these products that I'm using today in this video, I actually had to bring in from my other room because these are the products that I've been using in my daily life for going out, for glam. Usually I do this makeup so quickly because I'm not talking to anyone, I'm not filming, I'm not being distracted. I'm one of those people that can't even listen to music when I'm doing my makeup because it always distracts me. I always like to sing along or do a little dance. And when I'm getting ready, especially when I'm rushing, I just cannot have those distractions at all. I don't know if anyone else is like me. Probably not. So that's essentially the base. Next product I'm gonna use is the LYS bronzing stick. I've been reaching for this one a lot lately as well. I don't really bronze up heavily or crazy. Just like a couple of dots here and there. Kind of like that. I don't even really do the jawline so much. A Little bit underneath the lip, a little bit underneath the chin. And then with the face and body buffer, I'm just tapping that in and blending it. This bronzing stick is super creamy. It's one of the best on the market, honestly. Shade is Harmony, which works for me because it's not so dramatic, and I don't really like a dramatic bronzing contouring situation. I like for it to be natural, just like a couple shades deeper than my skin tone, not too much. This brush is genius, it just does the blending for you. Also, I keep my foundation brush handy, just so I can tap over that, blend out any harsh edges. Just tapping that into the hairline, tapping it up, not down, like that. So snatched, so, so snatched. 
The first time I used this technique after watching Tamana in her masterclass, I went to a New York Fashion Week event. It was for Project Runway and Bobbi Brown. And I literally got so many compliments on my skin. Not even on my makeup so much as on my skin. People literally told me that my skin looked snatched, like it looked like it was pulled back. And I didn't even have my hair up, mind you. So that's how I know it was the technique. Also, if you notice, the layers that I'm applying are very, very sheer. So I'm not applying a ton of makeup and then blending it out. I'm just adding it layer by layer, buffing and blending and lifting up, you know? So good. So then for blush, old fave, and not just my fave, everyone's fave, the Rare Beauty liquid blushes are incredible. They are absolutely my fave. I like to dot a couple of dots here and there. Well, actually just one per cheek because this product is extremely, extremely pigmented. I use the shade Happy and literally with the same foundation brush, I'm gonna tap that out and blend with everything. Yeah, these brushes are definitely due for a good wash, let me tell you. I've been loving the strawberry makeup look lately too. So whatever blush I'm using, I also like to apply it kind of to the side of my nose where the contouring happens or instead of contouring and also into my concealer, that little Barbie moment, you know? So fresh and so easy. And now I'm gonna set with the Lunar Beauty Setting Powder. This one has been on repeat. Man, I love it so much. I've been reaching for this one so much that it's almost replaced my Bare Minerals. I know, shocker. So I'm using the Translucent Light. This is a very, very, very recent fave, but I can't seem to put it down because it is such great quality. It's so micro fine. I really love the velvet puff on this. And the puff is actually what I've been using, specifically for the under eye and for like snatching the nose, you know? So this is kind of what I've been doing. Basically, I've been baking the very inner corner of my under eye and also the outer corner, kind of lifting it along my cheekbone towards the temple and then just setting this part, the porous part of my cheek, right? Also, been adding a little bit of powder right in between my brows, right there, and just like that to the center. A Little bit on the chin chin, smile lines, like that. I know this looks really crazy and you probably have not really seen me do this much in my YouTube videos, but this is what I do. And I don't do this for every day for like a basic look. I only do this for glam. So then for the rest of the face, I like to grab my Essence 16 hour cover and lash powder foundation and uh, reach for a new brush from the Dress Your Face brush set. This one is the flat powder brush. This is something that I specifically learned from her masterclass. She doesn't actually use loose setting powders. She uses the Max Studio Fix powder foundations. So I need to get my hands on those. But for now, my 16 hour cover and last from Essence will do. What she does is then she sets the rest of the face, not just the bright points, but the rest of the face with the powder foundation. She also sets all the contour zones with a slightly darker powder. I'm not gonna do that because I don't find that I really need to. I don't like to contour that much. And I feel like with the bronzing that I did, I have enough, but I am gonna make sure that I set everything else. The blush, the forehead. Basically now I am mattifying and I am sealing everything in. And honestly, the result is so, 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 so long lasting and so smooth. If you do it this way, your makeup is guaranteed to last you 12 or more hours. I've tested it. So I'm gonna grab the Petite Powder Brush and just whisk away all of that baking. I don't really like to keep the baking on for too long. Some people do and that's fine, but because I'm not that much of a baker, I'm like a baby baker, five minutes is more than enough for me. And you can clearly see that this is brightened, this is heightened, and everything looks very, very natural. Of course, I also like to use my Bare Minerals Mineral Veil, just like an additional little touch of that, specifically here in my pore zones. But of course, I did not grab that one. It is still in my other room, but just imagine that I did. All right, and now once everything is set, I reach for my bronzer, one size, and this is the Light Trio. I like to grab the lightest shade and just very gently go over the perimeter of the face. For my highlighter, I'm gonna use this Tarte Shape Tape Glow Bar Highlighter Palette. I'm gonna use this middle shade here. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that on that same brush, the Petite Powder. This is not a super glowy highlighter, but I like to use it lately just to bring back a little bit of light to this very, very matte powder down face. Like a little bit on the top of the cheekbone, a little bit across the nose bridge, a little bit right here on the forehead, and also just along the jawline. The slightest amount of that. You probably can't even see it, honestly. And then I'm gonna reach for my most worn highlighter of the year. Every time I wear highlighter on my IG stories, whenever I go anywhere, chances are it's this highlighter and it's the Catrice More Than Glow Highlighter in the shade Beyond Golden Glow. Gonna grab this brush, press and slide fan eyeshader. I'm gonna add just the tiniest amount on my nose tip. This is very, very beaming and bright, so this is what looks amazing on camera. I'm just gonna do the slightest 
nose snatch, basically highlight the center of my nose bridge, down the nose bridge, and I'm gonna add just a touch of that to my cheekbone and my eye socket, literally just rounding out that eye socket right here. That's it. Sometimes I like to add a little bit more with the finger for that extra pop. But this is what's gonna give you that little spotlight effect. Also learn that from Dress Your Face and implementing hard. That's it, that's all I'm gonna do. Sometimes if I'm feeling extra generous on time, I like to add a little bit of powder blush on top. But this to me looks very nice. Maybe I don't even wanna mess with it. But you know what, I am gonna mess with it because that's just who I am. I'm gonna grab this Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush in Pretty Peach. The one that shattered the other day, I'm so sad. And with the Petite Blusher brush from Dress Your Face, I'm gonna add just a little bit of that right over and under that highlighter. This particular brush has just brush. This particular blush has just a little bit of a reflect. So it is nice to wear with a highlighter. And that's pretty much it for the base. I love the way that it looks. I'm just gonna press a little bit of more powder into the pore zones. Typically I would do this with the bare minerals. That is the face base. All right, so now the brows. My brows are so nice lately. I am loving my brows. So I actually don't even do much to my brows lately. What I do do, and what I've been reaching for the most lately is actually the Dominique Cosmetics Brow Gel. This one, and I also reach for the Rare Beauty as well. I kind of alternate between those two. Basically, I brush out my brows. I used to do my brows before everything else, but now that they are fully grown out, I like to do them last just so I can get rid of any foundation that might be in them or any powder. So I just use the brow gel. I kind of just brush them naturally, and then I try to stick the ends to the skin. This brow gel is one of my favorites for unruly brows. It's such an easy formula. It definitely sticks them to the skin. It can laminate them if that's what you want, but I've just been enjoying my natural brow shape lately so much that I don't even feel the need to laminate. I've just been brushing them out and kind of grooming them, brushing them in the direction that they naturally grow in. And that's been my brow vibe lately. Also, you might have seen me talk about the NARS Light Reflecting Eye Brightener. I absolutely love this product. I like it for the under eye, but specifically, I have been using it to clean up my brow bone. I'm just looking for a clean brush real quick. I'm gonna grab this one. The Precision Painter brush. Clean it up real quick using some micellar water. The shade that I'm using is Golden Eye, which is also the shade that I like to use for my under eye on gym days or errands days where I'm wearing the Cali Ray skin tint. But on glam days, this is what I do. And this is what I've been doing lately. I like to just chisel out the brow bone, just like that, and just like that. And then with the previous brush, the one that I used for the highlighter, I just blend it down. This is a super, super easy technique. <laughs> this is what I've been doing since I've been liking my brows. Just quick, easy, to the point. So I'm just gonna set that with powder. I'm even gonna set my entire lid with powder. And this kind of softens that line as well. Still keeps it like nice and clean. And then depending on the eye look that I'm going for, I either extend the brow a little bit. Like right now, I don't actually have any fill product within my brow, but you can see that the tail end just needs a little bit more love. So I'm gonna grab the Dominique Cosmetics Brow Pencil, Brow Blade. This is what I've been using. The shade that I go for is Cool Deep Brown. And I kind of just extend it ever so slightly, like that. And then I perfect the shape a little bit on this side because it's not as perfect on this side as it is here. And that's pretty much it. Sometimes I'll add in like one or two strokes here and there within the actual width of my brow, like that, that's it. Honestly, I haven't even had the chance nor the need to use my NYX Lift and Snatch brow pen. I feel like my brows are so perfect now. They are so perfect for me and for my liking that I don't even need to do much. I can't believe I was able to grow them out, seriously. I'm gonna move on to some eyeshadow palettes that I've been using a lot of lately. And you could probably already guess it is the Janessa Myrick's Groundwork to Finding Neutrals and also the Natasha Denona, I Need a Nude. This one has been on repeat. I pretty much wear this for every single event. And by the time I'm done with my face base, typically I don't really have much time for my eyes. So I'll probably just grab this and dip my finger into any one of these shimmery shades, just depending on what my outfit and what my jewelry is looking like. So today I'm gonna go for shade Whisper. This is just a neutral taupey metallic shade. I literally, I just grab it on my finger. I don't have time for brushes when it comes to eyeshadows. And basically what I do is I stretch it across my lid just like that. 
And then I kind of diffuse it into the brow bone. How nice. Same thing on the other eye, diffusing it into the brow bone. Then I'm gonna grab one of these pomade shades, a defining shade from the Danessa Myricks pencil definer brush. I'm gonna go for shade Bark and kind of just run that through the outer portion of the lash line, lifting it ever so slightly and darkening it like that. This looks super, super soft, but it also looks a little bit glam. So this is why I've been going for this technique and using specifically these shadows lately. It's just easy. It's just easy and they have proven themselves to be amazing for my everyday life. And granted, my everyday life might probably be a little bit different from everyone else's because I am in the beauty industry, because I do attend a lot of events. Maybe because of that, the products that I'm saving that are working for me actually make me a pretty good candidate for testing all these products. Sorry, I was kind of thinking about what I was doing. I was wondering if I should go a little bit more dramatic. And of course I can't think and talk at the same time. So this is why I can't listen to music while doing my makeup because everything seems to distract me. <laughs> and I swear, whenever I'm not doing anything else, when I'm just committing myself to doing makeup is when it comes out looking the best. I'm gonna do one more thing. And that is grab one of these sparkly shades. I'm gonna go for shade Sheen because literally this is probably my most used shade from this palette. And it adds just such a beautiful wet iridescence to the lid. I'm gonna add that to the very center. I'm gonna raise it up all the way to the brow. I feel like that looks very, very, very glam. Just like that. Then I'm gonna go back with my highlighter and add a little bit of that directly to my brow bone and kind of connect with my temple. Okay, this is more than what I do, honestly. This is what I do if I have enough time, if I have filmed everything, if my outfit is ready to go, it's steamed, you know? My hair is in rollers, it's ready to go. That's when I do that. I'm gonna go back to Sheen and just add a pinch of that right there, right there. Oh. So good. By the way, Shade Sheen is very similar to Urban Decay Naked Cowboy. So if you don't have this palette and you're looking for a shade like this, Naked Cowboy is the one. It's another shade that I use a lot of. Here it is. It's not Naked Cowboy, it is Space Cowboy. I am so sorry. But Space Cowboy, I believe, is from the original Naked palette, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, I definitely like to dip into that as well, just for that little bit of iridescence and sparkle. You get the drift. This eyeliner from Trevor X Dose of Colors is actually a really, really nice eyeliner. So I'm gonna use it the way that I've been using it. I'm gonna draw a very, very light wing, not too heavy, just like that. And then take it back along the lash line, boom. And then same thing on the other side. To be honest, I always actually do this part in the car, when I'm in the Uber, on my way to the event. And sometimes when I have false lashes on, it's really easy to apply it because I let the falsies kind of guide my hand. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And then I'm gonna grab the white part of this pencil. I'm gonna extend my inner corner ever so slightly, just like that, and just like that, easy. Curling my lashes for the mascara. Like I said, if I have time, I do falsies, but this is just, I guess, a more wearable version of something that you can implement in case you don't wear falsies on a regular basis. For my mascara, I've been reaching for pretty much these three mascaras lately. The CoverGirl Cleantopia Lash Blast, the Jones Road Mascara, and also the Fan Fest. In no particular order, I am just going to pick out one. Okay, CoverGirl Lash Blast. This one I really like. Probably one of my most favorite clean mascaras that's currently out on the market. And the fact that it's from CoverGirl, it's affordable, makes the lashes nice and visible, even though I have eyeliner on. It's just a trusty one. Non-gimmicky wand. You could layer it if you want it to be chunky. And this is also a great formula to do different types of lash looks with. Perhaps you want a more flared lash, or you want to crimp all your lashes and make it into a dolly look. I actually do have a video on how you can do that on my IG and also I believe on TikTok. Definitely check that out. And this is a trusty formula. It is not waterproof, but it does not smudge whatsoever. So it might as well be waterproof. I mean, look how nice. I don't think I need falsies actually. With this look, it's very easy going, but a little bit on the glam side. These lashes are perfect, so I'm gonna leave it at that. I never really put mascara on my bottom lashes. It's not something that I'm doing lately. I'm just liking all of the oomph, all the magic to be on the top lash line on my lids, and then just like a little something in the corner. For the lips, you already know. My Too Faced Lip Injection Extreme Liner is like my absolute favorite one at the moment. This is what I reach for on a daily basis. I use shade Hot and Spicy and also the shade Cinnamon Swell, just depending on the look that I wanna go for. Hot and Spicy is kinda like 
my lips but better. Of course, I already have lip liner on. Oh my gosh, I always forget, but you get the idea. I'm gonna outline. I feel like because this lip liner tends to swell up the outline or the frame of my mouth, it actually makes my lips more shapely looking. So I'm completely, completely addicted to that feeling. And I think they need more shades. I definitely need a red in this formula. Okay, starting to feel the burn, starting to feel the burn. I'm gonna use a little bit of the cinnamon swell, which is like a brown, and I'm just gonna feather in the corners like that. So typically, I like to reach for my Too Faced Lip Injection Extreme, especially if I'm running late. This is like my go-to everyday running late to an event look. I just grab my two liners and then my Lip Injection Extreme. I apply that in the car when I'm already on the way or like five minutes right before I'm about to step into the event. But today I'm gonna try something different actually, but it's from the same person who had founded the original Lip Injection Extreme. I'm talking about Jared and his new brand, Polite Society. So this is their Big Mouth Lip Plumping Oil Gloss. And I heard it through the grapevine that this one might even be better than the Lip Injection Extreme. So I have got to test it out. This is my first time using it. So no, this is not something that I've been using on the daily, but you understand what I'm trying to do here. Okay. So this definitely looks and feels a little bit more like an oil, but I am feeling that sting almost immediately. I like the color. I like the fact that it's, ooh, that is spicy. I felt just a little bit on my tongue and oh my God. <laughs> this combo is making itself very present in my space right now. Okay, I like the color. Like I said, I like that it has like a slight peachy sort of tint. So it's transparent. It looks like my lips, but just a little bit more amplified, which is the look that I always go for. And essentially, this is it. This is my final look using all of my current new and old favorite makeup. How cute. Is it me or is she cute? I well put together and ready to head to an event. Mm. Let me show you a close up. Oh, I am eating that gloss and I am feeling it. Ooh. All right, here is the face. Eyes up close, just a little sparkly, slightly smoked out lash line and wing, but also very precise. Brows are looking very precise, but not too heavy. Cheek combo, skin, lips. What do we think? Okay, I'll tell you what I think. I think I did a fine job actually showing you my current go-to makeup that I do pretty much every single time I head out to an event, which at this point is about three to four times a week. <clears throat> oh my God, that spice is like getting in my throat, which at this point is like three to four times a week. This is sort of like the basic makeup that I do. I know it's not basic, it's on the glam side minus the lashes, but usually I just stick to this and I just change up a couple of things, maybe the color of my eyeshadow or perhaps the color of my blush, or maybe I like to do falsies instead of the mascara, something like that. But this is pretty much the basis for all the makeup that I do that you always see on IG and my IG stories, on TikTok, whenever I'm heading out. And these are the products that I'm currently using to achieve it. So I hope you guys have learned something in this video. It was actually really fun for me to put this together. I felt very easygoing and I felt like I was just hanging out with my sister or with one of my friends kind of just sharing what I do. So I hope you're here for it and I hope you like it. Let me know if you guys wanna see more videos like this, more of like my daily favorites. Perhaps maybe I could even add like a little vlog component. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe I'm pushing it. Maybe that's for a whole other channel, but let me know either which way. Comment below, tell me what you think about this look. And now I'm gonna zoom out. So peace out, I'm out, deuces. More videos over here and I'll see you in the next one.